You're listening to the Reds Podcast. This is episode number 31. This is part two of a two-part series. Laurel and I are getting married in just a few weeks. We got some marriage advice sent to us. And this is also great advice for a business partnership. If you're interested in having a better business and better partnerships, better relationships with your employees, listen to this episode of the Red Podcast. This is the Red Podcast. Real entrepreneur development. Make more money, work less, and live a life of freedom. No BS advice that really works. Here's your hosts, David Hooper and Laurel Staples. David, have you ever heard of poutine? I've heard of a word very similar to that, but I'm pretty sure that's not what you're talking about. That is not what we're talking about. Well, I just got back from Toronto, and that was their signature dish there, poutine. And it's French fries topped with gravy and cheese curds. See, every time I've been in Toronto, I eat pierogies. Ah, pierogies. Also a signature dish. If you go on, like if there was a Biggest Loser in Canada... And they went through the person's refrigerator. Pierogies would be in there. I promise you. Oh, I believe that. I don't know if anyone would have poutine in their refrigerator. But my friend who I went to Toronto with thought that was like the greatest dish ever. And we had it. We got there in the morning on Friday, last Friday. And we went to lunch right when we got there. And she ordered the dish and... She was like, I am going to have this at every meal until we leave. And she did not do that. But she was pretty excited about it. I thought it looked kind of gross. They have whole restaurants dedicated to this dish. There's called like Putinaries or something like that. And so you can go in and they have different versions of it. It might have shredded pork on it or it might have chicken or they have different variations on this classic dish, which I think is hilarious. So you really could eat it every day at every meal. You really could. But by the end, by the last day we were there, my friend was like, okay, I'm totally sick of this now. (laughs) (laughs) Because she would order it. That was like the only thing she would eat for dinner. Two nights in a row, like that was her dinner. Nothing else. And it it was funny. So you could make yourself sick of anything if you just ate it for dinner. This is the RED Podcast. RED stands for Real Entrepreneur Development. We are for bloggers, speakers, authors, coaches, consultants, anyone who's trying to spread their message. Anybody trying to spread their message, this is the podcast for you. And We've got a great episode. This is part two of a two-part series. Laurel and I, it just so happens, happen to be getting married in about six weeks. Yep. Not a lot of time there. Not a lot of time. It's not too late to back out, though. (laughs) And part of what is, I guess, the standard in where we are, Tennessee, the buckle of the Bible Belt, Nashville, Tennessee, they encourage couples that are going to get married to go to premarital counseling, and they do that by giving them a discount on their marriage license. And we were talking to the, we're going to call him the officiator of our wedding. He gave me, it's a two-sheet list. It says marriage advice, secrets to a happy marriage. We're talking about that on this two-part series here on Red Podcast because the secrets to a happy marriage are very similar to the secrets to a happy business partnership. Let me tell you how I got the idea for this podcast, though. Laurel. It was a man named Dave Jackson, and you know Dave because you met him at New Media Expo in Las Vegas earlier this year. Oh, yeah. Dave is fantastic. I mean, his podcast is awesome, so I'm always tuning in. Dave is one of those guys, he's one of the most recognized voices in podcasting, and he runs a site called schoolofpodcasting.com. It's a great service. If you are interested in in starting your own podcast. Maybe you've got a business and you want to further that business, or maybe you're just interested in talking. You've got an idea or a message you want to spread. Dave is the guy to speak to if you don't know how to get going because he'll help you with equipment. He will help you with putting the show together. He'll help you with the technical aspect, getting things uploaded, getting it distributed. Very, very sharp guy. He's been involved with podcasting over 
10 years, if you can believe it, because this is a relatively new medium. Dave is the man to talk to, and he can do it cheaply. A lot of guys are charging thousands of dollars. I think School of Podcasting maybe is 50 bucks. So go to School of Podcasting if you're interested. We'll be giving away some gifts from our 30 Days of Red Hot giveaway, courtesy of Dave, later. But for now, let's get back to the secrets to a happy marriage, or as I say, secrets to a great business partnership. This is a list, Laurel, of about 43 things. I just have kind of cherry-picked the ones that I think would work for business because some of them, like fight naked, that's not going to maybe Whoa. work for your business. Yeah. yeah, that's personal. No, no. Does that's, it really say that? That's one of them, yeah. Okay, we've never tried that. I just want to say that. Well, we're business partners. Ah, true. Somebody did tell us that was one of the funniest pieces of advice that we had when we started Red Podcast, that we should do the podcast naked. <laughs> Two pieces of advice. One was that we should fight, and one is that we should record naked. And so if we just combine those... That would just be... There you go. We're right on the list. We only have 42 more things on Amy's list. Yeah, we'd be fighting naked. So here's number 19. And the first part of this podcast, if you're interested in just starting from the beginning, go to redpodcast.com slash 30 for episode one of this series. But here's what she says, number 19. Marriage is not 50-50. It's two people giving 100% all of the time. And I think that absolutely is true in business partnerships as well. And that's what I've always said to my clients, especially when I was doing more health coaching and life coaching is that you got to come in with a hundred percent. Your partner has to come in with a hundred percent and together you have to be a hundred percent. There's no 50, 50, a hundred kind of stuff. I think the reason for that is because it keeps you, if you're always bringing 100%, it keeps you from worrying that somebody's working more or somebody's getting paid more. You just give everything that you can and just trust the other person is going to do everything that they can as well. And then the business gets done. Yeah, there's none of that Jerry Maguire, you complete me kind of stuff. Like that's not... No, not for marriage and not for business. No, you got to come in 100%. Every time you might not be good at everything, you might be better at certain things and your business partner is better at other things and that's totally fine, but you got to come in and bring 100% of what you're good at. Number 23 on the list and I've used this for I'm going to call them employees or workers or members of the team, never for partners though, and I think it's a good one. Never pass up an opportunity to say I love you. Now you might not use those words, but what I would say as far as a business partnership, never pass up an opportunity to show appreciation. Partnerships that I've been involved with, Laurel, I'm usually the big idea guy. I've got somebody behind the scenes that maybe isn't in the spotlight, but is doing really great work as far as accounting or some of the more technical stuff. They're not often seen and they don't get a lot of that appreciation. So just acknowledging that has gone a long way for me. I think that's really helpful. I mean, in any partnership relationship that you have, and we talked about this in episode 30 as well, is you got to look at the good side. You got to focus on the positive. You got to show appreciation. And again, you're not going to be telling them you love them probably, but just having that appreciation for them just makes the whole partnership go a lot smoother. Speaking of telling your business partners you love them, as a side note, we talked a little about this on the last episode, redpodcast.com slash 30 to listen to that. Don't hire the people that you want to be friends with. I would say be careful of what I call dual relationships. I would not recommend having a business partnership where you think it's like a dating service. You have to give me more information on that. Well, I think that having a dual relationship can get really, really messy. We talked a little bit about it here on Red Podcast, the fact that you and I have to negotiate and navigate a personal relationship and then also a business relationship. And we have been very, very cautious of that. Really, this is all that we do together as Red Podcast. We're not necessarily interested in moving forward to other business aspects. Number 27 on Amy's list, she says, be quick to say I'm sorry. And what I take as far as business advice from that is just own your mistakes. I think owning your mistakes is 
again, one of those things that's really easier said than done, but that's something that if you're going to have a stable, calm, productive relationship, you have to be that person that's the one that's going to admit your mistakes and put it out there and be willing to grow and go past them and do better and want to overcome them. But if you don't see what they are, you can't be, you can't bring a hundred percent. I think one of the big differentiators between what I'll call pros and amateurs, it's owning mistakes. It's taking responsibility for what goes wrong. Sometimes it's not even your fault, but it is your responsibility. If something goes wrong, if you're the boss, people are counting on you for payroll. It's your responsibility to get it done. And I think there's a difference between blame and responsibility is, you know, you don't have to blame yourself. It's nobody's fault. I don't think of things like that, but you do have to take responsibility. Your choices led up to the circumstances that occurred. And I think you have to take responsibility for that, but not blame yourself, not point your finger at other people. And that's the only way that you're going to be able to develop as a person, as a business owner, and create a thriving business is if you start to take responsibility. Number 28 on Amy's list. This is kind of an old school one, I think. It says, choose the one you love, then love the one you choose. By God, (laughs) never get divorced, stick it out, even if it sucks, love the one you choose. But there's some truth to that. I think that you need to choose your partnerships very, very cautiously, be slow to get into partnerships, and once you get in them, do what you can to make sure that you're doing all you can to stick them out. A lot of times people have a tendency, I think, to quit five minutes before the miracle, And if you do a good job of picking a partner and choosing the people that you work with, you're not going to have so many issues, but you still are going to have some tough times at times. This is one that doesn't really apply, but it does. Number 29, keep the in-laws out of your marriage. (laughs) I like that one. Let's talk about it from a business perspective, though. I say keep others out of your business. I agree. Don't start asking amateurs for what you should do. Get in, handle your business. We talked about on the last episode, number 30, about don't triangulate. If you've got a problem, go to your business partner and talk to him or her about it. Don't go to the peanut gallery, somebody who's never run a business, because they're going to agree with you because they're your friends. Yeah, I mean, I think asking for advice from other people, especially knowledgeable people, business coaches, mentors, people like that, that's going to be valuable. But what I said in the last episode is, Anything that I say about my partner, whether it's a business partner, relationship partner, to somebody else, I say to that partner. And I really make it a point to do that because nobody else can help you solve a problem or get through an issue or get better, develop a stronger relationship unless you go to that person that you're in a relationship with. So I think that's really important. Yeah, that might make you feel like you're moving forward but it's not moving forward. Just thinking about it or else talking about it to somebody else other than the person that you've got a problem with. You've got to take care of it and you do that by going to that person directly. Number 31, here's another one. This is another old school marriage. By God, don't ever get divorced. Hang in there, it's worth it. Sometimes it's not worth it. If you didn't do a good job of picking your partnership, you need to get out of there, business or personal. At the same time, if you've done what we're suggesting, Be slow to go into business with people. There are going to be those rough times in any business. And if you do hang in there, you know, I had a business partner for a number of years from the last business that I was working. And I feel like we went through Vietnam together. Laurel. I mean, we had good and bad times, but we're in that foxhole and there were guns going off around us and bombs and, and metaphorically speaking, metaphorically. And having been through that, we have a better relationship now than ever. But there was a time when we about killed each other. Mm -hmm. If you can get through it, though, it can be amazing. Again, David, I think it goes back to choosing the right partner. Because if you don't choose the right partner, it's okay to let that partner go or to let that partnership fail. You and I have obviously done that. When I chose my first business partner, didn't work out. We weren't right for each other. And I I think what you said, David, really hit home is 
be slow to choose your partner.